I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? At some point in our lives, we always feel fat, whether it's three pounds overweight or 15 or more. I know there have been days when I feel fat at two pounds overweight. So help us with this dilemma. Our guest is Dr. Sherry Lieberman. Doctor, thank you so much for it's joining me. It's great to be with you, Barry. You've written several books. One of them I love is called Dare to Lose. Thank you. Four Simple Steps to a Better Body. How did you come up with this? It's based on more than 20 years of working with women who have been on any diet known to woman. They've been on protein shakes, they've eaten carbs, they've not eaten carbs, they've eaten all fat, they've eaten no fat. And what we find, and what I have found at the end of the day is every time they did a diet, they lost, but then they gained the weight back. And it's really bad for a woman, Barry, because what happens is, as we gain and lose and gain and lose, hey, it would be great if we were gaining back muscle every time we gain weight, but we keep gaining back body fat. So if we're bouncing around the same 10, 20, 50, 80, 100 pounds, we're actually getting fatter every time we gain the weight back because we're gaining. Really? So what happens is, when I'm dealing with women, and, and the women who have the worst problem with this are those in their 40s entering menopause, slightly after menopause. By the time we get into our 40s, we've gained enormous amounts of body fat to the point where we're metabolically challenged. You've just explained that many women go on diets and they gain more fat, body fat, back and forth. But even if you go to the gym, people are still not losing weight or body fat. Precisely. It's a big problem. So the women that I'm seeing, I see women who really are so confused about what to eat at this point in time. They're absolutely insane about what do I eat. I've done every diet. Everybody says something different. Now what I do. So that's one issue. The other issue is, as you've mentioned, I'm working with women who, if you look at their food records, they're actually pretty good, Barry. I mean, they're not eating garbage. They're eating very well, and they are going to the gym every day, and they're still not losing weight. So what do you do with these women? Well, that's a good question. Isn't that a good question? <laughs> this is why I wrote the book. But, but it's, it's a real problem because can you imagine the frustration? You're eating well. You've given up all the garbage. You're working out religiously, and the scale's not moving. So you what's know, going on? What's going on is because of what I told you about being metabolically challenged from gaining and losing and gaining and losing, by the time you hit around 40, you can really be very resistant to losing weight. So my book addresses a number of things. Number one, how do we eat? What do we do to really burn fat 24-7? Because what you want to do when you're losing weight is you want to target body fat. You don't want to touch muscle. You only want to lose the weight as body fat. So number one, do we give up all carbs? No, they're not all created equal. We want to give up what we call high glycemic carbs. And what happens is you eat a high glycemic index carb. That means that it raises your blood sugar quickly like that. Your blood sugar goes up fast. You've eaten a piece of cake or a piece of white bread. Your insulin levels go up fast. And when those two things happen at the same time, bam, you switch into a fat storing mode. That ah. stinks. You don't want to go there. But if you had beans, if you had lentils, if you had yams, they can now have like a low-carb bread that's made with, you know, soy protein. There are so many things that we can eat that it is not difficult to do. So what I ask is that people really try to clean their diet, diets up as much as they can, eat the low glycemic index carbs, and also do specific exercise, which we'll talk about. Because once you've done that and you change your body composition, then you don't gain weight when you smell bread. You don't smell bread and your hips are bigger the next morning. <laughs> what is the glycemic index? The glycemic index is a measurement of how fast a food is going to throw your blood sugar through the roof. OK, so what kind of foods are these? Brownies, white flour, just about any processed foods. Foods that have a lot of sugar. How about a lot of the sports bars? People will eat a sports bar before they work out. Look at the grams of sugar in it. You eat a bar that's got 18, 19, 20 grams of sugar in it, you're going to go right into that fat storing mode. So what we want to do is we want to clean up your diet 
so that the foods that you're eating aren't causing body fat to store. But even before we do that, if we talk about the four steps in my program, the first step is really detox and de-stress. So I want people really to commit to doing a one-week program before they even start the plan just cleaning house, eating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, really detoxifying their body because if they're storing a lot of toxins, which we do in a lot of body fat, that can also make you resistant to losing weight. Is it, how come you can't have more than four pieces of fruit a day and you say certain portions for all the vegetables? For the detox diet right. and also for my general plan, you can eat vegetables as much as you want. What I've given is sort of like a, a sample menu plan, but the vegetables are really unlimited. The fruits, four fruits a day is actually a lot of fruit, and if you wanted to have a little bit more, you could, but what's different about my plan is it's no fruit juice, because fruit juice has a high glycemic index. Why? Because you've removed all the fiber. The difference between eating an apple, an apple really has a low to moderate glycemic index, but think about how many apples you have to squeeze to make a glass of apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> You're really getting a lot of sugar, is the bottom line. You get a lot of sugar when you remove all the fiber. What the pectin does, when we talk about that glycemic index of food, mm -hmm. what will slow the sugar absorption is a lot of fiber. Now you've heard of apple pectin. Yes. Buy it in a health food store as a supplement. Apples have a ton of pectin, so when you eat an apple, you eat an orange has citrus pectin, grapefruit has grapefruit pe pectin. When you eat these types of fruits, they don't have a high glycemic index. So if you were eating apples, if you were eating oranges, grapefruits, what has a high glycemic index? A very ripe banana. Bananas have a very high glycemic index if they're ripe, a moderate glycemic index if they're less ripe. So when you read my book, I'm actually giving you the lists of foods so that you could see what's high, what's moderate, and what's low. And it's very important to understand that because once you've done the detox diet, I give you a low glycemic index plan, and then I give you a moderate. And I really want you to decide what's going to work best for you, and I even give you a questionnaire assessment once you've changed your body composition and you've reached your goal, you can tolerate sugar on occasion. You can have, a, you can have your cake and eat it too. Who should not go on a detox program? I can't think of a single person who wouldn't benefit by doing the detox for a week. Now, you could certainly do the program without doing the detox. You know what the, the one-week detox does, Barry, is it accelerates the weight loss. Because I noticed you said you can lose 5 to 10 pounds. Easily. And the first 10 pounds that we weigh anyway is water. Yes, especially if you are very, very, very sensitive to carbs and you have a lot of body fat you're also going to be storing a lot of water weight and also a lot of bloat. And what the detox will do is it'll take, it could take off a quick 10 pounds even before you start, but by cleaning house, it will accelerate the program anyway. But the other thing that I've done in this book that I think is really important for people to understand is, Barry, there are women that won't lose weight. Doesn't much matter what they do. And without specific dietary supplements, that accelerate weight loss, it is not going to happen for them. They're not crazy. They're not cheating on their diet. These are women that come in with diet records and say, you know, my doctor said, oh, you're closet eating at night. They're not doing that. They're really eating well. They need a little bit more adjustment for the glycemic index of food, but they also need specific supplements. It's not instead of doing the plan. It's to accelerate the plan. You were talking about metabolism. Key, key, okay. You become metabolically challenged if you've yo-yoed. All right. You become perimenopausal, your metabolism slows down. Yet another thing we have to look forward to, because hot flashes just aren't enough. We also have to have our metabolism <laughs> slow down and gain weight. Not sweating all the, all the time isn't enough. So what happens is there are a number of things that can cause us to have our metabolism slow down. So why wouldn't you take a supplement that could potentially speed up your metabolism without making you jittery. I'm not talking about taking ephedra because it's not necessary to use ephedra. Something that would stimulate your metabolism. How about something that would preferentially burn body fat? Sounds no, good. No, I don't want to take that. That's what you want to do. And something that's also going to enhance what we call thermogenesis. What is that? That means your ability to burn calories, protein, fat, and carbohydrate so that they're not stored as body fat. 
It's a win-win situation. You want to know some of the things that'll do that? Sure. Green tea. What's the downside of taking a green tea supplement? It also protects you against cancer and heart disease. It's a wonderful thing to take. We know about the health benefits of green tea, and it does all the things we just talked about. Conjugated linoleic acid. What is that? That's CLA for short. A new kid on the block, and what that does also is preferentially help your body to burn body fat. And you know what else CLA does? Once you've lost body fat, it helps, prevent, it helps to prevent you from gaining it back. And those are just two supplements I write about a lot more. I'll give you another one. Okay. And you're going to like this because I did this just for you. Let's say you're following my plan. You're on it for six weeks and you say, you know, Dr. Sherry, if I don't have a brownie, I'm going to kill somebody, all right? I want to have that darn brownie. Well, what if I told you that there are supplements that you can take? Remember I told you that the problem with eating sugar or a brownie is that your blood sugar goes up fast, your insulin levels go up fast, and then bam, you switch into that fat storing mode. What if there's supplements that could blunt that response? You don't want to take them? Why not? Something as simple as chromium. You know about chromium. It's an essential mineral. It's for glucose tolerance. You could treat type 2 diabetes with chromium. What chromium does is it blunts that rise in blood sugar. So if you did an occasional cheat, you wouldn't gain weight from it. As Ooh. long as you take the chromium supplement. As long as you're taking the chromium. There's other things. There's glucosol, which is also a new kid on the block. That's corosolic acid. There's an ancient Ayurvedic herb known as Gymnema sylvestri. You may have heard about it. You may have had somebody on your show talking about it. Never heard of it. These are things that can blunt that blood sugar rise. So if you had your brownie, you had a piece of cake, you had a glass of wine, you did these things. You don't want to do them day in and day out. But if you did them on occasion, you wouldn't gain weight from it. Because what do women do worse than men? Be beat themselves up when they cheat, right? You cheat and go, ah, I'm not going to follow it. Uh, you know, I had, I had a brownie and I had a bagel <laughs> for breakfast, and you know what? Forget the Forget bag. it. I'm just not going to do Why? You go off the wagon once in a while. You're human. It happens. But what if you could do things that don't impede your weight loss efforts? You're not going to go off the wagon every day, because if you do that, then you're not committed and you're serious. But from time to time, it happens. It's okay. But what if you can take something so you don't gain weight and you continue to lose weight? That's a win-win situation. I'm very worried about is the fact that HEPA, which I'm not sure what the acronym stands for, passed this law that says they can come in to a doctor's office and take your records. Tell you how to protect yourself about that. And that, and that brings me to, to two things that are probably a little off the subject, but I think that they're very important. Number one, our health freedom is seriously at risk. And people don't realize that. Well, it. they better get wise because not, it, it goes beyond just the fact that the government can get your information. How about a drug company getting your information and marketing drugs to you directly? Yeah. It, it, is, it, is, it is actually disgusting what we are allowing to have happen. But let me tell you some ways that you can protect yourself about it. Great. Make sure that none of your information is ever submitted electronically. You sit down with your physician. You have a conversation with him or her because this only pertains to the electronic transmission of your medical records and tests. It doesn't pertain to fax. It doesn't pertain to mail. It really pertains to electronic transmitting. So when a, an insurance claim is being filed, have your physician not do it electronically. It really has oh, to do with the electronic submittal of information. But even so, I mean, it's one thing if... The gover I mean, why does the government have to know my personal medical stuff? I mean, that's my personal, that's my personal information. But you want to make sure, and that's a conversation that you can have with your physician. The other thing, talking about medical freedom, is you probably won't know this unless you're diagnosed with cancer, and that is you don't have freedom of choice here. Excuse me? You do not have freedom of choice here. Most of the quote-unquote alternative cancer treatments that are being done out of this country are really people are flying out of the country and going to Germany, to Mexico, they're going all over the world to get therapies that are available all over the world and not available here. And you won't know that until you would get diagnosed with the big C word or you would diagnose with a terminal illness and you went, that's the only treatment I have available? Where are the statistics? Oh, 50% survival in five years. Well, can I, me. can I do better than that? No, those are the statistics. If you have breast cancer in general, it's fifty year, you know, it's fifty percent survival in five years. Most most women are diagnosed at stage three. Well, I don't go to I don't go to a casino with those odds. So I'm certainly not going to deal with my health with those odds. And that's 
partially why, why I wrote the other book, The Real Vitamin and Mineral Book, because I think that people have the right to take charge of their health and well-being, and they need to do that, and they need to do it rather quickly. One of the things that I really liked about this book was the fact that you listed all the different vitamins, the pros, the cons, what it can do for you and what it can't do. But let's go back to a couple things that are always on people's right. minds. Cancer. The big C. And heart disease. Two major things. Now, what can we do? Well, I'm just going to bring up fish oil because fish oil is something that we know about fish oil and cardiovascular health and omega-3s and it's so good for your heart. If I just give you just a couple things about how important it is to both treat and prevent cancer, I am going to blow your mind. Okay. Now, you ready blow for my this? Mind. I'm going to blow your mind. Now, number one, fish oil prevents the spread of metastasis when you have cancer. It is one of the few things that actually does that. It is absolutely remarkable. So that's number one. Wait a minute. How much should you take? You want to take, I would say, for preventive purposes, about three to six grams a day of fish oil. And I would say for therapeutic reasons, you're probably looking more like um, s maybe six grams a day and above. Depending on who you are. Depending on who you time. are. And maybe, you, you know, you might be taking a lot of other things as well. So that's number one about fish oil. Number two, it's also what we call an angiogenesis inhibitor. And what does that mean? Well, for a cancer... I like talking to you. You asked, you asked the question you the What does that mean? <laughs> because people go, angiogenesis, is, is that a disease? What angiogenesis is, is in order for a cancer cell to turn into a tumor and grow and to thrive, your body will form this capillary network. And what it is, is it's capillaries running to the tumor. It brings food. It has to be fed. A tumor cannot survive unless it's being fed. That's the process of angiogenesis. But we have things that can cut those capillaries, and fish oil will do that. So fish oil is really quite remarkable. So in other words, stock up on sardines, tuna. Now, now let's talk about eating tuna, and you get a lot of mercury. So what I tell people to do, <laughs> eat fatty fish. Salmon's probably the best. Why not take a fish oil supplement? Cut to the chase. I don't eat salmon every day. You don't eat salmon every day. Take fish oil every day. Why not? You know how remarkable it is for your skin? What about having beautiful skins and not having wrinkles? Whoa. Not bad. How about having beautiful hair, beautiful nails? Fish oil is a very important part of your skin, your hair, and your nails. Now, what about flaxseed oil? Great question. Flaxseed oil actually has not been shown to have the same therapeutic benefit as fish oil. Uh -huh. And in fact, in a recent study when they gave flaxseed oil, you know, fish oil has eicosapentaenoic acid and doxahexaenoic acid, EPA and DHA for short. Thank you. So EPA and DHA are things that we can measure in the blood. When you take flaxseed oil, it's what we call a plant precursor to those two fatty acids. It has what we call alpha-linolenic acid. It's supposed to go through a pathway and eventually be turned into EPA and DHA. But when they gave flax seed oil, they didn't measure a whole heck of a lot of EPA and DHA in the blood. But when you give fish oil, you can. It's not quite the same therapeutic benefit. However, I like flax meal and I like flax seeds. And I like that because you're getting a ton of other plant compounds in addition to that alpha linolenic acid. You're getting something called lignans. And what lignans are, are they're very, very powerful phytohormones. And they protect us against hormones in the environment, chemical hormones in the environment, and what we would call hormone mi mimickers, like that would be in pesticides and plastics and things like that. Another supplement that I write about, you know, I write about, you know, B vitamins and antioxidants and how important they are for cancer. But I'll, I'll tell you another thing just about antioxidants as a whole, because um, we were talking about cancer. A lot of oncologists will say, don't take antioxidants with chemotherapy. I cannot tell you how wrong that information is. And it's wrong to the point of it actually being dangerous. Why would they come up and say something like this? You want the real reason? Yeah. It's called, um, a very dear friend of mine who has a radio show gave me a new name. You ready for my new name? I love to it's, hear it. It's Dr. Read the Damn Research Lieberman. <laughs> 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 That is the answer to the question, is that if you're reading the research, 
then you wouldn't be making that statement. There are so many studies out right now by Dr. Kadar Prasad, who's one of the leading experts in antioxidant research. I mean, there have been numerous studies, not only showing that antioxidants don't interfere, but antioxidants augment chemotherapy, will protect you against the side effects of chemotherapy, like for example, something like adriamycin, which is very commonly given for breast cancer. One of the main side effects is, eh, it could destroy your heart muscle a little bit and kill you. Well, antioxidants protect against that. Why the heck wouldn't you give it? So there's a lot of misinformation. And what I wanted to do in the Real Vitamin and Mineral book was give people the power and the tools to design their own supplement program. How do you know when you've hit the right balance in vitamin supplements? On, I developed something called the Optimum Daily Intake. That is in sharp contrast to the recommended daily intake. Now, what is the recommended daily intake, in my opinion? Kind of compare it to the minimum wage, just <laughs> enough to get by. There are no therapeutic studies using RDIs of any vitamin. What's None. an RDI? Recommended daily intake. That's okay. what you see on the label. All right. For example, the RDI for vitamin E is 30 international units a day. That will prevent cancer in a fruit fly. <laughs> it will do absolutely <laughs> nothing for you. If you gave 30 international units of vitamin E, there isn't a study that ever gave 30 international units of vitamin E to anyone, whether you look at LDL cholesterol or protecting your heart, protecting your arteries. When they did this huge nurses' health study with, you know, hundreds and thousands of women and looked to see, you know, what level of vitamin E protected them, the minimum amount of vitamin E that you would, that you would really want to take is at least 400 international units. So I give a range. I don't give just a number. It's a range. Now, you would use the lower end of the range if you have designer genes. No one in your family has heart <laughs> disease. Everybody lives till 120. You know, I don't have designer genes. I got, I got stuff in my family. So I mean, I have people that died from cancer. I have people that died from heart disease. So I'm doing the upper range of the ODI. But if you're very, if you, you know, if you, if you have longevity and not a lot of, you know, heart disease and cancer in your family, maybe you go with the lower end. How about if you live in Wyoming? You're not living in New York. No stress. No stress lower amounts of things to get a therapeutic effect. If you're living in New York, I don't care who you are, you have to take high levels of antioxidants. You're breathing garbage in from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep at night. How could you not take enough? You have to take vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, all of them at therapeutic levels. And, I, and we're just talking about antioxidants. We didn't even get to the B vitamins and the minerals and the other stuff. What would you recommend women do to protect, let's say, their heart and prevent breast cancer? I would say that if breast cancer runs in your family, mm -hmm. and, I, and when you look in my book, I have what's called a troubleshooting guide at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You can actually look up a condition like breast cancer, uh, multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue, diabetes. diabetes, whatever it is. And it refers you to the specific supplements that are therapeutic for that particular problem. So what I recommend people do is I recommend that they take a baseline of supplementation. And that is they really should take everything across the board. They shouldn't just take vitamin E and they shouldn't just take vitamin C because then you're really missing the boat. And antioxidants work synergistically. So do B vitamins, so do minerals, and they're together in our food anyway. Now you don't have to take everything separately because then you'd rattle when you walk and you really <laughs> wouldn't be very happy. So how you can accomplish this is there are lots of what we would call high potency multivitamins, multiminerals. And they usually are a three a day, a four a day, or a six a day. Or the, other, the one a day. The packets, the packets. Mm -hmm. You can't get minerals in a one a day. Can't do it. Just to, oh, just, okay. for, just to get 1,000 milligrams of calcium alone, you need at least three tablets. So if you're going to get like a well rounded kind of baseline, I give you sort of a, 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 a guide of what levels there should be in its a range. Then you would turn to the sections that are really key to you. So if breast cancer is key to you, one of the major things I write about is a dry form of vitamin E called vitamin E succinate. Huh. There's a tremendous amount of information, animal data that shows that it can prevent breast cancer and also data that shows that it is also useful for the treatment of breast cancer. And I wouldn't use it alone, but I mean, if you were ha being treated for breast cancer, you should be taking vitamin E succinate as well. And I give a specific dose, and I tell you how much you should take. So you would want to add that to your program. Coenzyme Q10, 
incredible research with stage four breast cancer unbelievable research wow. with women taking you know they failed all treatment their stage four they took chemo they took radiation everything you can imagine nothing left to do there were some outstanding remissions induced with very high levels of CoQ10 as much as 400 milligrams a day so that's quite were, a bit it's quite a bit so if you were preventing it maybe you want to take one to 200 milligrams a day if you already had it and you're in remission Hey, maybe you want to take 400 milligrams a day. It's expensive, but I would go for it. Sherry, what would you like to leave the audience with? I would like to leave the audience with, number one, it's time for people to take charge of their health and well-being. And I've written two books that empower women to do that, The Real Vitamin and Mineral Book and also Dare to Lose. Take charge of your weight and well-being. I've given you a very simple program to follow. I have thousands upon thousands of women that have done it successfully. The Real Vitamin and Mineral Book gives you the ability to once and for all sit down and figure out what supplement <laughs> should I take, <laughs> what dosage should I take. And I tell you how to do that, and I lead you how to do that. The other thing is I'll just give people my website because I have a lot of information on it, and it's www Dr. Shari, and that's D R S H A R I dot net. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned something about improving your health and well being.